Um, next talk in this session before the lunch break is by Elisa Shavinsky about the history of women in Python. Give her a round of applause. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, and thank you, Marcus, for um, your part in me being here. Uh, it was your invitation to, that I should apply uh, to PyCon Australia. I wouldn't have known about it necessarily. Um, so uh, I really appreciate that. I'm so happy to be here today and especially pleased to be giving this talk. It's one of my favorites. And I think this talk gets better every time I give it uh, because I'm able to incorporate more and more feedback about um, who and what should be included. That said, let's dive in. Um, my name is Alyssa Shavinsky. I am the editor of Lean Out, the struggle for gender equality in tech and startup culture. Um, and a bit of an amateur historian, uh, which is what I did with Lean Out and what I'm doing here today. I'm also um, a co-founder at this security company, but that's not really uh, that relevant to our talk today. Ada Lovelace was the first computer programmer, very well known. Um, and so Ada Lovelace does get some credit, but that's kind of easy uh, because it was so long ago. Um, as we start to get a little later in time, it's a little harder. You've got uh, women such as the Harvard Observatory computers. They helped revolutionize the science of astronomy, but they were known simply as Pickering's harem. As you can see right here, I decided to write out their names because they actually have names. They're not simply part of a harem. And then you get into the 90s, and women, women were so essential to the development of programming and computing and the internet itself, but they were all but erased from our narrative of who built the internet. Um, and you see from this Forbes cover in the 90s of the E-gang, <laughs> back when like E-anything was how they described the internet. Uh, and you've got like Linus Torvald and my friend Gene Hoffman's on there and all these men who did really cool stuff, uh, but white men were not the only people who built the internet in the 90s. Still, this was the way that history recorded this era. You've got uh, this New York Times article, Lawsuit Shakes Foundation of a Man's World of Tech. Now, the New York Times has of late gotten a little um, wild in the opinion section. You know, it seems like if you want an op-ed column in the New York Times, you need to have a rather extreme opinion, whether that be on the right or on the left. Um, but David Streitfeld isn't, you know, the equivalent of some colorful opinion writer. David Streitfeld is a Pulitzer Prize winning author who writes consistently on technology news. Um, and ironically, his, his latest article is on inequality rising. Don't get me started on that. No, he doesn't mention gender. Lawsuit shakes foundation of a man's world in tech. This was posted unironically in the New York Times in June of 2012. And David Streitfeld wrote, and the New York Times published, unironically, men, capitalized, invented the internet. And not just any men. Men with pocket protectors. Men who idolized Mr. Spock and cried when Steve Jobs died. Nerds, geeks, give them their due. Without men, we would never know what our friends were doing five minutes ago. So I'm here today to say Accurate attribution matters. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Pulitzer Prize winning author from the New York Times, it was not only men with pocket protectors who built Facebook and social media and the internet as we know it today. Exhibit one, Nicole Pello wrote the first browser that could run on any device. Nicole Pello is the woman in the center and the best Wikipedia photo or any photo, really, of her that I could find um, really was of Tim Berners-Lee, who was much more front and center. So you see the photo of the woman, and then there's a man smiling at the camera. Uh, there's a healthy debate on Wikipedia as to whether Nicole Pello even deserves an entry. And she doesn't merit her own photo. Um, that's been 
attacked consistently. Uh, which is to say that even when we know factually that women have been doing this, uh, it's still, um, uh, these facts are still controversial. Radia Perlman, don't call me mother of the internet. Judith Estrin, who invented TCP IP. Sandra Lerner, who co-designed the first Cisco router. And Glenda Schroeder, noted for implementing the first command line user interface shell and publishing one of the first research papers on electronic mail systems email being a rather critical piece of infrastructure. But there are no photos of her, so let's just use Tim Berners-Lee. <laughs> this is to say, you know, a lot of women, and this is just a sample, were really instrumental in doing this work, and yet, you know, this is who ends up in the history books. Or that's how it used to be, and this is starting to get better. And that's one reason why I'm so grateful to be here doing this talk today. Uh, which I think is part of better recognizing and doing more proper attribution, and also uh, to highlight how things are getting better. Uh, here's one example. Elizabeth Smith Friedman was a pioneer cryptographer, and her story is now being told. Specifically here in this best-selling book by Jason Fagone, was a very interesting Twitter, by the way, well worth following, and this book is fantastic. Katherine Johnson is an even more heartwarming example. She has been highlighted as one of the human computers of NASA in the film Hidden Figures. Uh, anyone here see that movie? Yeah, right? Like, so many people have seen this. These stories are finally being told. Um, I think we should give like a round of applause for that. It's like, thank you, finally. It's very, very big. And I was gratified because um, I watch too much television and I'm like, no, it's self-care, it's fine. But, um, <laughs> but I, I still, I'm like, I watch a little too much television. But I was watching too much of this not very good show, but it was really fun, timeless. And then there's Katherine Johnson saving the moon landing. Like, that's fantastic. I can fit it into my talk. We're talking about Katherine Johnson. Totally useful that I watch this show. <laughs> and so it's not only in these major mainstream television sh uh, ma movies, it's also making its way into you know, these other pieces of pop culture uh, where we're starting to acknowledge and go back in history and recognize these people. Um, and it matters. Uh, Obama awarded Katherine Johnson the Presidential Medal of Freedom. She's still alive today and finally being acknowledged. Another example of women who were like, lost in history in 1946, six brilliant young women programmed the first all-electronic programmable computer. Now, this was before you had O'Reilly books and you know open source tech. <laughs> it's like if I want to go and learn JavaScript, I, there's like so many ways to do it. Every time I get in an Uber, they're like, "How do I learn how to program?" I'm like, "I am here to tell you." I'm like, "Just Google, learn how to code, and don't pay too much for whatever you find." <laughs> That's like my only advice. <laughs> like there are a lot of resources, they're free, like don't get cons about it, just like Codecademy or whatever you find, it's like just go and start. Uh, but in 1946 they did not have that. Uh, and these women learned how to program uh, using only logical diagrams. They had to invent this themselves. And by the time they were finished, ENIAC ran a ballistics trajectory perfectly. Now, one reason this was all secret was because it was run by the US Army as part of a secret World War II project. Um, but at some point, it was announced and unveiled. And who got credit? John Motchley, computer pioneer. Yes, best known for co-inventing alongside John Presper Eckert, the first electronic digital computer. These two men, they are the ones who did it. No one else is really involved. Yep, 1946. <laughs> and even today, you know, history is slow to correct itself, or rather historians are slow to correct the history. Uh, and so when I did a search on this topic, um, I found relatively current exhibitions, you know, celebrating men like John Matchley and with very little about all the other people who were very instrumental to this project. And you have to ask, why, you know, what went wrong here? Like, why, why did the women not get credit? 
So historians did discover photographic evidence of the women being involved, but they thought that they were refrigerator ladies. When historians found these photos, they said, oh, these are models. Historians mistook these women for refrigerator ladies, i.e. models posing in front of the machine. I thought this was really funny, but also kind of terrible. <laughs> like they found it, but they're like, oh, I'm like, they're just, they're just making it look good. Like, no, they were the programmers. They were doing the thing, the thing itself. And those women are finally being acknowledged today. You can watch uh, this film celebrating them on Vimeo. Um, if you look up the ENIAC Programmers Project, uh, when I first started doing this talk, this film was just in development. Um, and then I went back and revised it over the last few days and was like, oh, cool, like the film's live now. Yes, like progress. So this is to say that we're starting to do a better job on the history of women in computer science, you know, at large. And I think uh, we're starting to do better as a Python community by running talks like this here. Like I'm very gratified to have the opportunity to come and do this. Very grateful for that. Um, and appreciate that PyCon isn't only like live coding, you know, it's these other pieces and these community and culture pieces. And so, you know, this list of people in Python uh, is extremely incomplete. <laughs> it's not just Uncle Bob and Eric Raymond. Um, and this was part of my motivation for doing this, uh, is to talk about all the other people who've been, you know, making Python and the Python community vibrant and go. And so now I'm going to talk a bit about who some of those people are, um, again, because accurate attribution matters. And I think their work and their stories are really interesting. I had the chance to interview a number of them about what they thought was interesting and exciting and challenging in Python. Uh, I think a lot of you must probably already know Carol Willing. Uh, she is a Python Software Foundation fellow, um, very long list of all of her credentials, including co-organizing PyLadies in San Diego and San Diego Python. Is that Python? Yeah. So I asked her um, what she was thinking about with this coming year. She said, personally, I think we've barely scratched the surface of how Project Jupyter will impact education in the coming years. The open standard of the Jupyter messaging protocol allows many different computer languages to be supported, while at the same time allowing others to tailor the front end user interface. And I wanted also to get some advice, right? Like, these are people who are already making, you know, interesting contributions in the community. What's their advice for other people? And Carol says, for advice, try to be kind, humble, and help others along the way. Contribute to the rich ecosystem of Python libraries beyond the core language to build your skills. It's the success of the ecosystem that feeds back into the core development of C Python. And I spoke with Olga. Uh, who is chair of the biology and bio bioinformatics at SciPyCon. Um, and I am told that Olga presented her thesis in this dress. Uh, I did not know that, but I think that's quite wonderful. Very excited and inspired about that. I'm like, yeah, like, let's be feminine while, you know, presenting our research. It's, she looks fantastic. I want to dress like that. That's what I should wear next time I do this presentation. Maybe in, in my own color, other color. And Olga says, I'm excited about NumPy and Jupyter deciding to push the scientific community in the future and support only Python 3 and their future releases. There's a lot of awesome things in Python 3 that many scientists are missing out on. Let's talk about the community. The Python community is warm and welcoming. I love the lightning talks of PyCon and PyData. And fixing documentation is an awesome way to get into an open source project. And if you're confused by a particular wording, then probably a lot of other people are too. And I'd like to second this. Like, improving documentation is a bit like perhaps undervalued, but um, I don't know. It's so, so important. Um, very grateful to people who are doing that. And from Lynn Root, who is an SRE at Spotify, and she's been recognized for her work co-founding PyLadies. She's been a speaker at PyCon four times, recurring PyCon volunteer, and she's done just like so much uh, tremendous work. And some highlights uh, from her talk, if you run microservices, you should be tracing them. It's otherwise very difficult to understand an entire system's performance. 
resource usage, among other aspects. However, good luck with that. Whether you choose a self-hosted solution or a provided service, documentation is all around lacking. Granted, it's still a young space, very much growing, but if there is an open spec that could be influenced or used to implement your own, if you're so inclined, basically like, please help with documentation, consistent theme. I met Lindsay at Pi Caribbean, um, and Lindsay had this tremendous talk on accessibility, and um, I was really moved by that to start thinking about that more generally. Um, and Lindsay runs a, a Slack, um, Disabled in Tech. Uh, I have to get the URL. Uh, it's on the next slide. Um, so if you want that URL, tweet me. For inclusion of disabled people, a lot of conferences aren't captioning their videos when they post them up on YouTube. And a lot of venues aren't wheelchair accessible, and speakers throw around words like crazy. Um, so I think that's one area we could all do a little bit better. And as for what's exciting about Python in 2018, it's the amazing growth in Africa of Python, specifically around Django and Django Girls. Africa is very much a place to watch for Python. Um, and uh, I have to give this shout out to Lindsay because I included some of that later in this talk and that really came from uh, Lindsay's inspiration. And uh, Ava, the Director of Operations for uh, Python Software Foundation. I love the inclusivity and kindness of the community. Every time I attend a local event or go to a PyCon conference, I feel motivated and inspired to continue to serve the community as best I can. And my advice to those getting started in the Python community is to attend events and network. If face-to-face -face interactions are not your thing, I suggest joining a couple mailing lists or the Python IRC channel, also a great way to meet Pythonistas. And for folks who are introverted, personally, I suggest giving a talk and then spending the rest of the time in the quiet room. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> Works great. People think, you know, like you've shown up. You have. You've totally shown up, and then you hide. And you make other quiet friends in the quiet room with other quiet people. <laughs> and if you want to find me later, obviously that's where. Or Twitter. Twitter is the quiet room also. <laughs> it is, right? It's like me alone in my room. Well, OK, yeah. I guess Twitter is the noisy drama room that you're in inside your quiet room, which may be why it's so confusing. <laughs> so I was like, I thought this was quiet time, but everyone's yelling. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Marlena uh, is doing this tremendous work, director at Python Software Foundation. And um, I actually need to interview Marlena, but um, found one of these quotes. Marlena says, I ran into one of the girls that attended one of our first Zimbabwe mentorship programs. She got into Harvard and is pursuing to computer science. I almost cried in front of her. It's so awesome to see Zimbo, Zimbabwe, girls doing well and feeling like we played a part in it. Uh, so um, I think the, the things that are going on in Africa for women right now are just like so tremendous, very exciting. I spoke with Mariata um, a few times, uh, and Mariata's advice to newbies in Python. The truth is, even after many years of programming with Python, I still feel like a newbie. And it's OK. You probably won't be good at it right away. Don't give up. The thing is, Python is not just code. It's a community. The community can help you participate and contribute. And to women in tech, please, Stay. We all need you here. And as many of you know, Marietta is a core developer um, at Python, uh, to Python, and contributes to documentation, core workflow, python.org. Lorena is a member of the board for NumFocus and says, the challenge we must solve is securing the needed support for open source projects that provide foundational infrastructure for national R&D. More advice for beginners uh, from Olga Sendeka, co-founder of Django Girls. Do you have any advice tips for programming beginners from the blog? So you don't need to be perfect at the beginning. You will make many, many mistakes. And that's OK. You will improve. The best thing you can do is learning how to ask questions and how to not be afraid of asking them. 
And I was very excited to come across Aisha's profile as I was discovering more about what's happening in Africa. Uh, she has this wonderful blog post on organizing a Django Girls in Africa and says, during Django Girls Lagos, a conscious effort was made to include women from other states in Nigeria to attend the workshop so they could go back to their communities and replicate these processes. It has been delightful to see this dream come true with Django Girls um, in these various places, I, I'm not sure the pronunciation, so please forgive me, co-organized by Django Girls Lagos attendees. So let's give a round of applause uh, for all of these women uh, and non-binary people and for all of the people here who are building this wonderful community. Um, and thank you so much for having me. We'll take questions uh, and um, a round of applause first for all of the people. So we can take questions, but one thing that I also would really love to encourage is if there's anyone who you think should be in the next version of this talk, uh, many of the people who are here now um, are because of suggestions that have come from the audience. Uh, and we're going to hopefully, I think, uh, start some kind of wiki and like get all of this online. OK, we're going to go with curated questions as you liked. Um, so Thank there's going to be a microphone over here and over here. Please come here to when you have a question or Want to give a suggestion for names? Please. Just come up, please, so we can hear you in the recording. Um, have you looked at the Django girls stories? Like Ola and Ola, from the very beginning of that, they were compiling. They have a blog. Yeah. Uh, and every single week or month or something like that, they've profiled somebody like for years and years. And I think it's still active. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm. You know, I've come across some of them, um, and I think that's actually a really good point. They've been doing a really good job of that. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, please. Um, I've been doing Python for since five years, more or less. And one of the things I realized is how good it's with women, the community. Yes, it really is. And do you think that's, my, my question is, is this across all te technologies, all other languages, other uh, kind of technologies, is happening the same thing? It's across the board in terms of technology, in the technology world, or is something very special of Python? I think it's safe to say uh, that um, inclusivity is not equally distributed in tech. Um, PyCon is one of the more inclusive conferences that I go to. Um, it's one reason I'm such a fan. Uh, and because PyCon is such, so core to the Python community, I think it's also safe to say that, you know, Python is a more inclusive community than some of the other, other spaces. Um, I know certainly there are communities I'm in that are a little more hostile. Um, you know, I don't want to name specific ones, but, and also I don't want to discount if people are having bad experiences in Python and I just don't know about it. Um, but I can say that I've been going to like many, many PyCon events, um, Py Caribbean, Py Canada, uh, following what's going on with the major PyCon event. Um, and I think you can see like by the code of conduct signs that are being posted, the kinds of talks that are here and the people who are here, like this is very special. Um, and I guess the challenge is like, how do we spread this more widely? And the truth is you can't boil the ocean. Uh, so I'm grateful that we're doing a good job here and hopefully like, we can help set a standard and show that it's possible to do this so others can follow along. Yeah, and if there are other communities that are doing, doing a great job, um, please do let me know because I'd love to uh, just be aware of that and also see what they're doing. Uh, I love Python though. That's hi. Hi. Uh, yeah, great talk. I was surprised you mentioned uh, Africa. I just got back from Nairobi yeah. a few days ago and we had an intern in the office uh, Natasha, so yeah, she's at Yale doing CS. Uh, if you're doing interviews, it would be good for her to tell you about her experiences. Yeah, I'd love if you would connect us. I'd love to hear her experiences. No worries, that'll be great. And Thank also you. encourage her, that's excellent. Yeah. Are there more questions, suggestions? Uh, if not, we can, uh, we have one more. One more, somewhere? If not, could you come um, to the front? Thank oh, you. Wonderful. Uh, just 
Just uh, another a suggested name for the slides is Margaret Hamilton from the Apollo 11 project. Some people Thank think you. she's one of the, like, the top 10 programmers who ever lived. Excellent. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, so um, I will go like right outside to make space, um, you know, and clear this out. Uh, but if folks want to continue the conversation or ask me a question that maybe you didn't want to ask in front of everyone, you can find me just right outside. And thanks again for coming. I uh, really appreciate doing this talk here. Thank you. Yay. Thanks, Elisa. Um,